Hello, welcome to Nigeria's leading business and technology show on television with Don Pedro Agambi. And you know what we do here every week, but in case you don't, we look at issues, trends, and developments in the global ICT industry. Today, we have all our regular segment featuring. Stay with us. From Nigeria receives the first prize in the AISITT Fair to TV category for his program, ICT Africa. The technician, Don Pedro. ICT reporter of the year, electronic. Don Pedro Agamu. There's a lot of noise in the media about 5G, uh, but the realization is 4G coverage in Nigeria is still somewhere around 45% of our population. And you ask yourself, fintech should be on a cloud platform. So which cloud are they sitting on? So Nigerian fintech doing business in Nigeria, but they're sitting on the cloud outside of Nigeria. If you say that there is no Nigerian software to handle LNG shipping, if you say that there is no Nigerian software that can, that can handle remote well-held operations in the oil and gas sector, if you say there's no Nigerian software that can handle billing for power systems, despite the fact that your, your law already says that 70% of technology in the deregulated uh, PHCN, 70% of the technology must be Nigerian local content. And then you say there's no billing system that is Nigerian. There is no this, there's no that. When will there ever be? until we understand that actually the potential and the capacity of nations lies in the heads and minds of human beings and not under the ground. It's a country going nowhere. In case you've just joined us, you're watching Africa's Numero Uno business and technology show on television. When we come back from this quick break, you'll meet a tech personality of the week. Personality of the week is the managing director of the Nigeria Railway Property Management Company Limited, Mr. Timothy Zalanga. I'm sure you will like this conversation. Welcome to the program, Mr. Zalanga. Thank you so much. What is the mandate of the Nigeria Railway Property Management Company Limited? The Railway Property Management Company Limited is a full subsidiary of the Nigeria Railway Corporation, 100% owned by the uh, NRC. Uh, the main mandate of the company is actually to manage the landed property of the railways. Um, and the, the, the landed properties are categorized in, two, in two, two, two categories. One, the operational ones, which is mainly used for the running of the trains, like the stations, the, the quarters, and all that. And there are the non-operational areas of the land in which there are no real train operations going on there. So our mandate is to make sure that we manage and commercialize those non-operational uh, landed property of the, of the, of the railways. Across the length and breadth of this country, we find government properties, a lot of them dilapidated, infrastructure also um, decaying. What is the, the Nigeria Railway Property Management Company Limited doing to resuscitate a lot of uh, these properties? Okay, now, like I said, um, 
most of the uh, we we face this kind of question every now and then, um, and that's where I actually took time to differentiate the two types of property that we manage. Most of the ones that are visible to most Nigerians uh, is the operational uh, uh, properties like the quarters and you know when the colonial masters build the railways they actually build it outside the town but over time development because everything was centered around the railways so the railway where they acquired became the center of the city centers of most uh, uh, developed uh, uh, towns now because of the nature in which the railway has suffered over the years. Most of those structures were not uh, maintained and then you see quarters in the heart of a place like a Butameta here and you go through the, 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 the compound. These are non, uh, these are operational um, uh, properties which we don't uh, uh, manage. Uh, it's actually under the purview of the Nigeria Railway Corporation. The second reason also where you see uh, some of this dilapidation is that for the past 10 years, uh, the manager, uh, manager of NRC has been having a legal battle with the union over the monetization issue of uh, the workers claiming that during the Obasanjo government, the monetization policy should have actually been uh, affected. They should, have, should have, they have, they should have been beneficiaries of that monetization, claiming the houses should be monetized to them. And the management is saying, hang on, railways is key uh, operation that requires quarters for its staff. For the non-operational areas, what we've been doing over the years was to lease out most of those lands to private individuals who want to build businesses on the land. And, you know, lease is not selling. And this is one impression that most Nigerians don't no, you know, each time I face people, they say, ah, you've been selling railway lands, you've been selling this. They say, no, we don't sell railway lands, we actually lease it out. And the terms of the leasings are quite clear. If we lease a property for you for 25 years, which means you're supposed to run the business, build in that place, run and recover your money within that 25 years. After the expiration of the lease, both the land and the property you develop revert back uh, to, to, to railways, so which is a win-win scenario for us because we get the money for the rental as, as much as also when the lease expires, we get the property uh, together. Mm -hmm. So that has been our focus over the years to see how we can actually lease out those non-operational uh, um, land. Mr. Zalanga, can you tell us some of the achievements and innovations that you have brought to bear since your appointment as the managing director of the Nigeria Railway property? Well, uh, over the years, I mean, the, the railway uh, property company was established in 1997. And over the years, since then, we've leased out almost all the non-operational uh, land that is available nationwide. And there's now a very, very scarce availability of that land for major uh, uh, commercial activities. So we felt that there's a need to change our strategy because the company has to survive. We see this company surviving in the next 30, 50 uh, years and even growing to 100 years as all as the corporation has lasted. And we need to actually think, the, I mean, change the way we think. Just if we keep doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result, we cannot leave the time as insane. Uh, but we just sat down you know after uh, the new management came on board we now look at what can we do with the limited scarce availability of land and so we felt that the strategy has to change and we have to open new frontiers now instead of focusing on leasing because you can only lease the available land and that those lands are becoming scarce not available so we felt that the few remaining lands we want to invest on those lands and we want to make sure that we develop commercial activities that we own it as a company and then we can be generating the money over over the years a recent example is the is the guest house that we just opened here in Ebu um, It's a space of land of slightly about 2,000 square meters. And because we felt that if we lease it, we can only just get the peanut for uh, premium. But now with the hotel, this is going to keep going for as long as the hotel remains, maybe 30, 40 or 50 years. We are assured that that income of stream will be there for the company now in the same way we are now opening these new models like i mentioned during the opening we are doing same in kaduna we're actually building a, a bigger a more fancy hotel in abuja i mean in kaduna in the center of kaduna also for the same uh, purpose we're building a new market 
um, there's a popular market in Kaduna called um, the railway market at the Kaduna Junction. Uh, it's very strategic. We felt uh, instead of leasing that land, we will actually develop the, the market ourselves. Okay, that will open new revenue stream for us instead of uh, the usual leasing. Uh, we are doing the uh, same in Port Harcourt. We are opening, we are, we're going to build a shopping mall in the heart of uh, Port Harcourt. Uh, another land around that. Uh, we're doing similar uh, project in Jaws. We're going to do a mini estate in the heart of Jaws. Uh, and we felt that these are new ideas that will actually turn around the, the, the company beyond the way that we traditionally we have been running business. Uh, and and we, I, I believe so strongly that uh, this is the way forward. We, could, we run the numbers. It's, 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 it's mind-boggling. Um, you know, when we took over about two years ago, you know, we barely struggled to make some bigger amount. And when we look at the, the, the opportunities, we felt we could turn things around. Within the space of one year, we double what we were earning. And, you know, subsequent year, we're still increasing. We're keep, we keep changing, you know, our targets, moving it forward because we believe we can do it. I'm sure there are some challenges you may have encountered so far. Can you tell us some of them? It hasn't been all, all rosy. I tell you a, a small joke. Um, I joined the railways in um, 2011, about 10 years ago, uh, when the government then wanted to do a, a reform um, uh, of the railways. I actually came from a private sector background. I worked all my life in the private sector. So then it was unheard of <clears throat> to imagine that Somebody will leave a private sector and come and, and work with the railway, so to, to speak. So each time people ask me, I say, where are you now? I say, well, I'm with the railways. And they come in, railways again? Railways is like they couldn't be. Why are you going to railway? So when I got tired and fed up of that kind of comment, so if they ask me, I say, where I work? They say, well, you know, I'm working with the Federal Minister of Transportation. You know, they have this you know, plan to revive the railways. And just to to appease, you know, my people who sympathize with me, I'm thinking that I've got uh, to a dead end. Uh, but I, I, I saw the vision, I saw the opportunities, I saw that it's possible to, for things to, to, to change. And then 10 years after today, we are now reeling out the success story. So if I leave the railways today, I have a lot to point back and say, this is how we made the railways. This is the way we are living it today. No regrets with all um, uh, joy that we have contributed our quota to national development. What is the, the short, medium and long term plan of the railway property management company? What we've been working on was, was almost like the annual incremental yearly budget, but we felt that to have a meaningful development, we really have a mid medium term and a long term plans. So our budget system has just been changed to now three year cycle, which will actually build on a five year cycle, then fit, fitting into what we call the 25 year strategic plan for the railways. So we actually have those um, incremental plans that will build up to the larger uh, development plan. And this is what our focus is that we want to see that the, what we're adding this month is part of the 25 year plan that we have as a whole so that we really don't think that we are investing our resources and energy on things that is not building up to uh, success. So that's the way we felt that um, uh, the way forward for us individually as a company and a corporation as well. Let's look at staff welfare and the union now. Two questions in one. Are there plans to meet with the union, um, you know, either political reconciliation or out of court settlement to resolve um, the ongoing court case that is going on? Two, um, what plans do you have to also encourage staff welfare? There's no way you can sell out the quarters and run efficient railway system. And that's the union went to court and we've been in court for over 10 years and the court gave um, uh, maintaining the status quo order so in which the railway cannot even maintain the houses neither can the the union also uh, maintain the houses so that's why you see all the structures being dilapidated we would have actually renovated rehabilitated the the quarters long ago but for the court injunction and the court i mean the litigation has been going on for over 10 years like i said i probably want to assume that you've had the, the honorable minister recently has been really passionate about you know making sure that he improved the welfare of the the railway staff in particular. 
it's 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 sad that of course you know the the, the billions of, of naira that you get the equipment and you get you know the projects done and probably the the welfare of the typical railway worker is really um not yet where we expect it to be but like i said the government is quite working hard to make sure that they actually work you know on that and i know that the minister has said this several he's passionate in fact i think he turned out the, the, the request of other agency of government for a review of of salaries and say he, he can't just sit down and see that railways is earning this and other agency are earning much more than more than that so that tells you how passionate the the leadership is in terms of you know working in the on the welfare of the corporation but that is the nrc on the one side the company, which is the railway property management company, on the other side, again, we remain grateful to our parent company, the NRC. They were quite generous enough that they had to review our own condition of service to reflect a private sector uh, um, uh, condition of service so that we will have no reason to actually uh, not to play along the major market players and the, and the real estate um, uh, companies. Uh, so that has motivated us as, as a company and we're still working and coming up with different innovative ways of making sure our welfare is, uh, is, is, is improved. If I work to get your salaries, you know, into you know, multiply into five times, you will soon, within the next six months, adjust your budget, and you still find out that that salary is not is not good enough, and you will just eat it, to, uh, and it you just probably fizz it out. But if I can build your capacity, uh, that's the f major welfare that I think I will do you a favor because then you can go wherever with the things that nobody can take it. And I crack a joke again during the, the, the opening session to them. I said, when I was leaving um, the private sector where I was work I was working, you know, and then our head office was in Paris, you know, and, and the guy in Paris said, well, make sure that when he is leaving, when Zalanga is leaving, you collect his laptop. Everything is in, in his laptop. And I said they should reply and said they can collect the laptop, but they cannot collect what is in my in my head so i told them i said so if i want to really help you i can only provide these opportunities for you and i want to see that we become the 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 envy of any real property company in nigeria people who should come and be snatching our 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 our, our staff if we build that capacity so that's our thinking of you know welfare beyond just the naira and kobo the nigerian railway has been praised especially in the recent past for its many innovations what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, again, and this is where um, whether you like you know, the, the present administration or you don't like the administration, you must give it to the administration for the fact that what they're doing in, in the railway sector is quite commendable. This is something that was really unheard of. You know, you, you get interviews like this and uh, if it were like, you know, for seven, eight, ten, eight, ten years ago, they will tell you that the railway is in comatose and is, is almost half dead. You can't say the same thing today. Uh, you could see if there is any live activity happening in the country is about the, the, the railways. If there is any positive news is about the railways. Any, anything outside railways is said, tend to be negative. So uh, for me, I think the government is actually doing quite well. Um, you, we can't believe the fact that today we are running a new standard gauge line that runs from uh, Abuja to Kaduna. We are running the same standard gauge that runs from Lagos to, to Ibada. We are running the same standard gauge that runs from uh, Itape to Wari. By the way, Itape to Wari is, is almost the, the oldest project in the world. Uh, it's over 30 years since the inception of that project, but it never realized until this government came. And now we're happy to see that, you know, people are actually, you know, uh, struggling to get on that um, uh, train because it's, it's always full. This is when, this is the fact that we actually thought that that line would never be attractive, would never be commercial. Uh, commercial. Uh, and, uh, but fortunately now today, Nigerians have you know, f uh, turned out to be um, uh, a lucrative uh, a route. Uh, so, you know, with this, all these things happening, and this is only by the beginning, you know, in terms, these are services that are already operational. There are projects that are in the pipeline. The, the Lagos Ibadan line is not going to end there. It's actually Lagos Kano. So they have now started com coming from the Kano end to link up that 
uh, Abuja Kaduna to, to, to that line. So you now have Kano running all the way to Abuja and then Ibadan coming to Abuja. So that line will be a stretch from Lagos to, to Kano. The same thing government is planning to link up the Itape Wari lines from Itape to Abuja. And uh, so you can now run from the um, uh, south south. You know, down to uh, up to Abuja uh, on the on the on the on the rail, and of course you know also the international connection or, or, or sub regional connection between Kano and uh, up to Niger Republic, which the government is is is, is actually working on. So there's a whole lot of activities that nobody thought it would ever happen in, in Nigeria, but it's happening. It's real, and people are testifying uh, for it. We just keep getting positive comments from high-ranking uh, Nigerians and even ordinary Nigerians saying they, they, they were better for it today. If you run, uh, the, if you climb on the Abuja Kaduna line, you won't believe the caliber of people that, 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 that goes on that um, uh, line. You see generals actually, you know, coming on the uh, on the train, leaving their escort to to drive all the way to, to Abuja because with the security situation, the railway that services has become the saving grace for for that for that um, uh, for that route. Mm -hmm. So things are really happening, and I think they are positive development, which we never thought that would be would be would be here, and we're happy that we're part of the success story. Mm -hmm. Finally, Mr. Zalanga. What is your message to the staff and management team of the Nigerian Railway Management Company? Well, my, my message is first, I think, uh, you know, uh, most times uh, people get deceived that when you see somebody coming out, uh, they think that everything is done by that individual. There's just no way, no matter how innovative, no matter how creative, no matter how intelligent you are, if your house is on fire, you can't, you, you can't perform. So for me, the achievement is a collective achievement. And I really appreciate the fact that, you know, it's not easy to bring changes to people. And it's not easy to sell those changes. It's not people easy to, to, to force these changes into people. But when you now begin to introduce changes and you still get people that are following your career, it's a major, major uh, um, uh, point that one has to appreciate. So for me, first, I appreciate the fact that as we are pushing this staff hard, they are still responding and they are still obliging and they are still, you know, available to, to, to flexible to change. And we are getting the result together. So for me, that's the first thing. And I told them after this capacity building that the, the results uh, for, I mean, the, the reward for, for hard work is more work. So we really have to tighten our belt and expect that, you know, we will actually uh, still uh, climb the, the ladder that we hope to get there. So my message to them is, is still the same. We should we are nowhere close to where we want to be. Uh, our target is way way up there, uh, and we are hoping that uh, we will still breast our, uh, our our belt and uh, sit tight and make sure that we face our duty. And we really don't want to, we have limited time. Uh, you know, somebody like me, I'm in a tenure appointment. Very soon, uh, if my tenure is over, I really want to see somebody come and taking over to continue where uh, we, we will stop. So um, uh, first, appreciating their contribution. Uh, second, uh, bracing them for uh, more challenges that we will face in the near future. All right, Mr. Zalanga, thank you so much for finding time to talk to us. Thank you. Thank you. That was Mr. Timothy Zalanga, Chief Executive Officer of the Railway Property Management Company Limited. We hope you found those information quite useful and informative. And if you come around Lagos, don't forget to visit the Railway Guest House right at Ebutemeta. On behalf of the production crew, thanks for watching. Same time, same station. I'll be here next time. I'll see you.